<laughs> I need to make my restore after this. Hello, everybody. I love seeing all these faces on here. Welcome to our Tuesday night team call. I am Lauren Wenzel, Sapphire Ambassador. I've been with Plexus for six and a half years, more than six and a half years. So crazy. And Hannah and I are super excited to just come and chat about the goodies to end this year. Um, I feel like this whole team has life breathed back into it. It's like we all received some mouth to mouth and CPR <laughs> and it just feels good to be living again. Um, so I am going to let Hannah kick this off um, and let her get started and then we'll see what's left to talk about, but I'm excited to hear from her. Yeah, me too. So um, if you guys were hopping on with us a couple minutes before seven, we talked about bringing the heat tonight and we, most of us probably don't even need to hear the heat because like Lauren said, I feel like that's so true. We did just receive tons of CPR and I was talking with Chandra, my level one today. And we were like, man, I just feel like everyone's just killing it. The momentum is here. We have life in our business again. And I just love how Plexus has set us up so perfectly to have life brought back into our business because of an extra leaders retreat contest. Usually people like to sit back, like to kick their feet up during the holidays and people want a free vacation to Punta Cana, especially those, well, either or if you are on the cruise, you want more of that in your life because it's a flipping party. If you're a part of any of the Plexus uh, contest, but also people get excited, especially your audience when they see that this is the real deal. Not only do we have incredible products, but the business is so life-changing. And I wanted to bring some heat tonight because I need some heat in my life. And for my business, We've had so many ups and flows and for Lauren to mention that she, you know, can't believe it's been six years. I can't believe it's been nine years since I said yes to Plexus. So if you don't know my story, um, I'm going to give you guys a little back history, um, story time, just to keep it super brief. But most of you guys on here have heard it before. Um, but once I share my business testimony, I'm going to give you guys four to five top tips that I have seen work the best for me in my business over the course of nine years, but specifically right now, because I'm in the rebuilding stage. And we're going to talk about that in just a second. Um, but Hannah Kern, I am 34 years old and just had a baby. We um, experienced a ton of hardships leading up to this point with infertility and going through fertility treatments. And thankfully, um, lo and behold, the Plexus products pulled through again after doing reset for the very first time in my life. I got pregnant for the first time in my life without medications, without fertility treatments, without spending thousands of dollars, just 89 bucks got us pregnant for the first time in 2022, four days after I ended my first reset. So it's definitely more than just fat loss. But uh, like I said, I started my business in 2015. I was a customer for five months before then. Um, my journey started off really strong, I would say. Um, I was really, really good at selling the products but really bad at being a leader and showing people how to work this into the nooks and crannies of their life to show them the same options. Um, because I didn't know how to um, pour into people in, in a way that they can also lead others. I was just hoping that other people would just figure it out on their own. So we built really fast, but we also lost really fast. So I always like to say, I am definitely not the girl who's going to make it to the top the quickest, but I'm also going to be the girl and super proud to say that I'm going to be the girl who never quit. And nine years in is a long time. And there's days where I feel disappointed and kind of embarrassed to say that. Like sometimes I'll type it out in my post and delete that number nine because I feel shameful because other people have worked their way to the business so much quicker than I have or worked their way to the top so much quicker than I have. And it's a huge letdown. But then I remember why not? change the narrative in my brain and actually claim that as something to be so proud of because I did not quit. Most people who are in this business for so long instantly quit or feel less than when they compare their journey to someone else's time frame, and you instantly feel shame. And that's coming from nowhere above. That's only feelings from below. And I rebuke that in the name of Jesus, because that's something that I think should have a lot of pride in it. People um, tend to think this is a 
quick start business. And um, that is one of my tips that I'm sharing tonight about how to talk about the business. But here I am nine years later as a senior Ruby, but will not be here forever. Um, I will also say that I grew my points. We grew our points as a team to a thousand points in June of or July of 2021. That was the best um I guess the best moment in my business, because not only was, was I winning, but I had more people on my team. I believe we had 12 promotions on my team at that point. Everybody was winning and I've experienced being at the top all by myself at the top, being earning the trips on my team, going to leaders retreat, earning the cruise and nobody else earning that with me to everyone winning. And that's when I had my highest moment was when everyone else was winning with me. And I promise you it's way more fun that way. So if you're in a season of feeling um, down or stuck in your business, or maybe shameful for how long you're being here, change the rhetoric, because I promise you, you believe what you tell yourself and your words are so powerful. This business is 80% mindset, 20% skill set. So how cool is that, that the majority of this is something that we actually have control over, not the fact that we have no followers or no one's liking our post or our husband doesn't like us spending money on the credit card for our products every month or our mom makes fun of us at Christmas dinner when we're together and talking about the post and the lives that we do. It's, it's not about that. You have to change the rhetoric in your head because mindset is 100% of this. And I want to use the example. This actually happened to me last night. I'm a brand new mom of a five-month-old. She woke me up five times last night. So almost died today from exhaustion, but it's funny, um, mindset and everything, just like in motherhood, you either, whether you think you can, or you can't, you're hundred percent right. And daddy was out of town last night. He was in Houston for work. And so it was really just me. Well, Hayden would not stop crying. That's my daughter's name. Hayden would not stop crying at like three 30 in the morning. And I just honestly wanted to give up. I was like, I want to call. I just need to call daddy and tell him like, she's bawling her head off. I don't know what to do, but I'm like, honestly, what is daddy going to do? He's not going to save me. He's in Houston three hours away. It's three 30 in the morning. So I instantly, while I was bouncing her, I was like thinking in my head, okay, I could either call daddy right now and have him do nothing for me. Or I could just say, you know what? I'm mom. I'm mom. She, I'm the best person for her right now. I have everything that she needs. I have warmth. I have comfort. I have cuddles. I'm going to help her feel safe. And instantly when I changed that rhetoric, instead of feeling like I was barely surviving, I was thriving. I'm like, you know what? I got this. Calmed her down, put her in her night sleep and or her night sleeper. And she went to sleep. Granted, it was just three more hours, but I instantly felt so much more confident. So changing the rhetoric in your, in your story for your business, just like we do in mamahood every single day or in our marriage, everything is mindset. And so that's really what turned the corner for me and my business going from, I'm the only one who's earning the trips and earning the prizes and earning the contest to 12 people being able to be blessed by this business. Um, so my story um, is lengthier than I would have hoped, but I'm so grateful that I'm still earning while I'm learning all of the, the new habits that I have to learn. Um, Bob Heilig said this one time, if you feel like you have everything you need in this moment to get to the top, you are going to be seriously hurt. <laughs> you are seriously mistaken and confused. Every single level requires a new personal development requires a new skill set requires you to dive into a book or to make this many mistakes in order to learn what not to do and for me I'm grateful that I didn't get to the top as quickly as I wanted to because I would have lost it just as quickly as I built it and that's what we're doing right now learning as we go but still being able to earn and go on these incredible vacations and spoil my husband and help others see that if you're in it to win it then and not give up then amazing things can happen. So nine years later, we um, will be shooting 4,000 points again. And I'm going to give you my top tips that have worked well over the course of nine years, but specifically um, here in the last like quarter since I had Hayden. My top tips, number one that I wrote down is I feel like uh, setting proper expectations at the beginning of someone's journey rather than being in reactive mode when they don't have success or don't have likes on their post or they're not losing the weight, whether it's health or business related, setting proper expectations at the beginning will get you so much farther than just trying to pick up the pieces whenever they want to quit or throw in the towel or say it's too hard or say they don't have time or say that they have these headaches and they don't understand why 
detox is here. They're blaming the products instead of the process of their body getting healthy. Setting proper expectations for me is very important. It might take you a little bit longer to do that up front, but at least it could be over the phone or in a text message. I love texting it out. So if they ever bring something up or they want to quit or they're not feeling as they hit their goals as quickly as they wanted to, I just revert back to that text message that I sent them two months, 60 days prior three months prior. And I'm like, remember this? We talked about this consistency in time will change everything for you. So setting those proper expectations for health and the business at the beginning will help you guys run together and there won't be as many hurdles or they won't quit when they run into a hard day. Number two, phone calls for me to set those expectations for health goals and the business has changed absolutely everything. Um, when I was on maternity leave, I was walking Hayden around the block and we, we tried to do the 8am walks, but that just rarely ever happened. Um, we would look at like a 10am or 11am or sometimes be 6pm whenever she (laughs) was not cranky or pooping herself. Um, and I would listen to the Brittany Howard podcast and she's a diamond in our company. I absolutely love the way that she leads um, because she's super intentional. She knows everyone has the opportunity to win at this. She just wants to help them see that for themselves. Instead of what I did at the beginning of my journey was just expect everyone to figure it out. And if they didn't figure it out on their own, they weren't like me. They weren't going to be senior Ruby. They weren't going to work super hard when in fact, that was just a lie that I was making myself believe. So I didn't have to do the hard stuff. Phone conversations are hard, right? We would easily just send a text message or we would so much rather just send a voice message to someone. But over nine years, that is not as powerful as picking up the phone and asking about their limiting beliefs up front. Uncovering objections before they even have a chance to think them on their own helps you win and allows you to to nip them in the bud before they have a chance to allow that to come into you know, their, their progress or their success, or even giving this a chance. The second they start feeling that way, they're going to remember that you overcame that objection, or you can easily remind them that you overcame the fact that they don't have time for this because you also didn't have time. You're a brand new mom and you're working full time. And you're also a senior Ruby and working like 60 hours a week, but you figured this out because this was important to you. And you're doing this because You change your excuses into the reasons why you absolutely need this. So having those conversations up front over the phone, they can't say no, or they can't leave you on red, right? A lot of the times we bring up earn $300 bonus whenever you help three people and nobody responds, bringing that up on the phone. I promise you it's super awkward if they don't say anything back. (laughs) And so I like it uh, because it gives us a chance to actually have those hard conversations um, and they have to respond to me. I want them to see and help them cast the vision for themselves. Um, Number three, the biggest difference in my life lately is the boards app. If you don't have the boards app, you are doing your business and your team's business a total disservice. It's life-changing. Talk to your sponsor if you don't know what the boards app is, or if you don't have it yet, or if you're still trying to figure it out, spend like an hour on a Saturday morning or a Sunday night when the kids are in bed and just play with it click around. Usually, I mean, my team has boards app. Hopefully your team does. I know Emily has so many board resources in the well-being society. Um, These allow your, it saves so much time. They allow quick responses um, at your fingertips. And it's just, you don't have to think we need to stop reinventing the wheel. And that was something that I felt like for a long time I had to do, or I wasn't a good leader. I'm a type three Enneagram. So if I don't do things by myself, I feel like I'm just, I'm, I'm like weak and I can't, I'm not a good leader and I can't figure this out, which is like a total lie as well. I've got that. I got to deal with that. That's my own problem. But I realized just utilizing something that has worked for other teams is a game changer. So boards allowed me to um, get my team the resources that they need very quickly. Um, Number four is I think my favorite one, expect delays as an entrepreneur, but never give up on a bad day expect delays. This also goes back to setting proper expectations. Stop selling easy money. We have to be smart about how we are posting in our stories on Facebook, Instagram, what we're talking to people about when they first sign up. This is not an easy business. I've been in this business for nine years and I've had so many setbacks. The only month that I've ranked senior Ruby is this in this year is January. So we're in a total rebuild. And I, I feel like I do have great systems and I know what I'm doing, but it's, it's hard. It's so much, it's so much work, but with consistency and 
trial and lots of error, you get better. So expecting delays, but also setting the tone that you could have ups and flows in your business. And it's okay if some people stop ordering because we can lead your customer to water, but we can't force them to drink. So here's what we can do. We could do the best we can for customer service. We can do the best we can with setting those expectations up front, but it's a business. You never see Starbucks closing on a Saturday morning just because Friday didn't have as many sales as the day before. People need this. They need what we have. And they're looking for, they're looking to link arms with you and for you to remind them realistic expectations. People need this because I promise you, if Emily had oversold me and told me that I would get to Emerald super easy and nine years, that it was going to actually take me nine years, I probably would have said, oh, so Livia said, I'm not even going to try. But she was super real with me and we made a plan and actually looked at what my week looks like and fit it into the nooks and crannies when I was working 60 hours a week as a sales rep. This is possible, but it's not super easy. So we just need to be very careful with our wording, especially now since we have the bonus of doubling when we rank up all the way to Senior Ruby. Earning $485 is such a blessing for Christmas. But in my stories, how I'm approaching that is this is going to be a blessing for your family. If you're willing to work hard and if you're super coachable and if you want to change your life, just know you can't just offer me minimal work, right? Minimal effort always produces minimal results. And I'm not looking for someone who wants a quick and easy rate out. This is also not going to be the best for you. Those are some of the things I'm talking about in my stories. And when I have conversations with people, I always revert back to that. Um, last but not least is what I mentioned earlier. If you think you can or you can't, you're right. And I love the fact that we have most control over the outcome in our business because 80% of our business success comes from right up here, which is also sometimes super hard, especially if we're going through postpartum and really having a lot of emotional days. But I think it's time that you get all, get up off your butt and start looking at where you're at in your business and stop blaming other things and start using your excuses of what you're blaming as your reasons for actually making a difference. Stop doing the same things and expecting a different outcome. I pivot all the time in my business because if something is working for other people and I've noticed it's not working for me, I'm going to change that. And if my team points aren't growing and they're going backwards, something has to change. You have to be flexible. And I feel like that has really helped me in my business. And I know it's going to help you guys because this is the season of growth. We're almost about to hit 2024 and I cannot wait to see all of the new contests coming in, all of the new growth to be able to celebrate all of our wins because I believe in you guys. So if I can be here for nine years and still stick it out, <laughs> I know you can get over a really hard day too. Lauren, tell Love us it. what you have in mind for business top tips. Yes. Thank you so much. That was all so good. Um, I feel like this has been kind of a reflection year for me personally. Um, I, also being a new mom with my two month old, I spent a lot of this year a little bit more affected with my business than I anticipated. Um, and so I am just getting back into the swing of things. Um, and what I have noticed for me it was like, I had to come to kind of a breaking point. I was okay letting off of the gas this year until I wasn't okay with it anymore. And the point I came to with that was looking in my back office and it wasn't my points, but it was looking down at my team and seeing some of these girls who have worked so hard with their ranks. And this is not a diss on them or a reflection on them. In my opinion, I feel like it's a reflection of my leadership and what I was looking at of seeing my girls who had hit ranks that were game changers for their families and they had fallen back one, two, three ranks and their points were reflecting that and their paychecks were reflecting that and that was not okay with me. Um, that was what changed everything for me at the end of probably, I don't know, somewhere in the month of October after having my baby at the beginning of October. When I look at that in my back office, in no way, shape, or form do I immediately think like, oh my gosh, these girls are slacking. No, I immediately think, holy crap, I haven't shown up for my team this year. And 
everything that I'm looking at in reports is a reflection of what I have or have not done. And that was the, the point for me to say like, all right, enough is enough. You need to get off your rear end and get back into momentum, get back into working, get back into showing up and leading by example. Um, and so that's what I did. I started to get back into the swing of things at the end of October. And then in November, I just was like, okay, I'm prioritizing work again. I'm going to get in the team chat. I'm going to hype people up. I'm going to be doing recognition again. Um, I borderline might even be annoying to some people <laughs> and that's fine. But guess what happened? The whole darn team is like back at it. And it's been amazing. It was so fun to watch people get into the swing of things again as well. And it really just took one person being influential in a team chat. So don't ever discount the impact that you can have in your team. Um, whether that's 200 people or 12 people or four people, whatever that looks like, when you start bringing people into your team, you have influence over them and you can make an impact in their business, good or bad. And so you have to evaluate that and evaluate how you're showing up or not showing up. Look at what you're doing and then check and see what your team's doing, but do not be pointing fingers at all um, unless you're standing in the mirror and then figure your crap out after that. Um, so that was kind of for me this year, how my year looked, but I wrote down some five top tips as well. And um, mine are a smidge different, I guess, kind of the vibe of mine that I picked, but Hopefully it'll be, you know, people will be able to get something out of what Hannah shared or what, out of what I share. So my top tip really is speed of the leader, speed of the pack. Um, if your team is not doing things, what are you doing? And it's not just what are you doing publicly on your social media. Posting is not enough. It is not enough to grow your business it, significantly. It's not enough to build a team significantly. If you have your sights set on Ruby, Senior Ruby, Emerald, so on and so forth, you have to be doing things behind the scenes, like actual work. It's not enough to just be a social media sharer if you are looking to build a team. If you want happy customers, have at it. That's your storefront. Figure that out. Um, but if you are looking to influence, impact, make a difference, help other people with their finances, all of those things, then you have to keep your speed up because whatever you're doing is going to be reflected in your team. Um, number two is find your strengths and lean into them. And the reason why I share this is because um, as I was realizing when I started showing up again, my team started showing up again and it caught like wildfire. And for me, that was a moment of pride where I could say like, it matters. It matters what I do. It matters when I show up. It matters when I don't show up. Um, and clearly it makes a difference. And that was a really nice thing to figure out, but, um, it comes with a lot more responsibility. So for, like for me, leadership comes naturally. I 10 out of 10 times will wake up in the morning, open my phone, start doing plexus work. And it's always like what needs to be done for the team. Um, I don't know if that's the right or wrong way, but it's the right way for me. It's what feels right as a leader for me to show up and do things for my team, because when I help them, win, I win, um, and I can live with that. So I'm not a killer recruiter. That's not my thing. I cannot recruit 33 people in a month, like a Kaylee Johnson. And I'm, I'm also okay with that. I'm not going to lie. Um, I got my three people last month. I'm just going to feel confident about that for now, because I am getting back into the swing of things and being consistent, but find your strengths and lean into them hard. That doesn't mean ignore the things that you're not good at. You should still be trying to work on those. Like just because I'm not a killer recruiter, I, that doesn't mean I'm going to say, I don't care about that because I want to continue bringing in new people that I can then lead, um, and do the thing that I'm good at. So you can't have one without the other, but find your strengths and lean into them. Number three, look for people like you and be unapologetic AF about it. 
you want to work with people who are like you. And if you have the tenacity and the perseverance and all of the things that you want out of somebody that you might want to lead, those are the type of people that you want to look for. Um, uh Oh, hold on. My notes went away. Sorry. <laughs> Um, oh, what I would love for you guys to do actually is list in the comments here some of the attributes that you notice about some of the top diamonds that you follow and that you admire. And just start listing things about like characteristic traits that they have, whether it's from videos you've seen or if you follow them on social media. And then start reading through one, some of these comments down here. Um, and what I would encourage you to do is make a list of these things write it out in your notes or type it in your notes in your phone, whatever it might be tonight of anything that you see popping up here, consistent, humble, bold, authentic, smart, consistent, loyal, bubbly, giving, excited, works through their excuses. They're honest. These are all fantastic things. So these are diamonds in our company. These are people that you're actually watching lead from the top. These are the kind of people that you want to find to work underneath you and that you want to work with. So make sure that you're keeping that in mind as you are looking for people who are like you, or if you are not that way and you are not fulfilling those type of characteristics and somebody that you're looking for or somebody that you admire, give yourself a temp check and then figure out where you can be doing a little bit better. Um, but having that idea in mind of the ideal person that you're looking for is going to help you when you're out there posting who you're marketing to, um, kind of like your niche of people that you're looking for. Um, and number four, and I think I saw Emily comment this at one point, do you have a minimum wage mindset or are you working for gangsta money? The fact that diamonds in our company are making the same as brain surgeons, you guys, it's crazy. It is crazy. I am a college dropout. I am not making brain surgeon money yet, but I'm making more money than I ever, ever thought I would in my life, in my entire life. I have a high school diploma, and then I always have to mark some college completed whenever I fill out any sort of form. Um, and I used to always have like a really negative connotation when I was talking to myself. I always felt like I was going to have a ceiling, a cap. I wasn't going to be able to achieve things. And coming into this company, immediately my eyes were opened immensely to the unlimited potential. So breathe belief into people when you're talking about that. <laughs> I'm getting a thumbs up from my seven-year-old that I'm doing a good job. <laughs> um, get that trip. <laughs> He's cheering me on so we can get that trip. We're working hard, but we are working hard. All right, I love you. Go on. <laughs> um, okay. But I'm, I am doing things and accomplishing things with this company, partnered with this company. And I hope that's the same for you, that wherever you are, wherever you are at in your business, I hope it's a place that you once were praying for because it doesn't have to be your dream rank where you're at right now. Like Hannah said, she's been doing this for nine years and it was not the journey that she anticipated. I'm sure she was hoping to be to Emerald or to be to Sapphire or Diamond or even have gotten to Senior Ruby sooner than she did, but she's learned exactly what she's needed to along the way to get her where she needs to be now. And at one point in time, she was praying for this. Um, and that's the same for me. Like at one point in time, I was praying for the ability to make money that would afford my family a beautiful new home and my third baby that I get to stay home with. And I don't have to worry about sending her to daycare or with a stranger or whatever. I get the blessing of being with my child again, my third child for the entirety of her life leading up to whenever I sent her to school. Um, so whatever those dreams look like for you, whatever the beauty of life looks like for you, that is possible with this company. So you just keep pushing forward, but it's all about the mindset of it. Um, and it doesn't even have to be that kind of like transition from talking about money motivation into other things. But if money is not your motivation, that's completely fine. If the finances are not it for you, figure out what it is that tailors your mindset and then flip that switch when it comes to how you're working towards just wishing for it. Um, and then number five, when your fire is out, you have to figure out what that, what your gasoline is, uncap it and 
pour that crap on top, like douse whatever you have going on in your gasoline and watch it set fire because you cannot, I don't know, you just can't do anything if you don't have a fire lit inside of you. And that's not to say you can't work without motivation. Um, you still have to show up and work consistently, even when you don't feel like it. And even when there's seasons where it's slow, your team's quiet, maybe somebody left for another company. Um, I don't know. You just like are having some personal life issues going on. You still have to show up and you still have to make it count. Um, figuring out, like Hannah said, that there are natural ebbs and flows in your business. It's going to happen. We have seasons where our points drop backward. And this year was that for me. And I just was okay with it for a while. And like I said, until I wasn't. And now at this point, I'm like, okay, no more. We're not, not showing up. We're not, not getting in the team pages. I am not leaning back and not being a good leader to the people who count on me. Um, and that's my team. I'm responsible to them. And it's, it, if you lean into that, at least then I don't see how you can't show up every single day. Um, when you're doing it for other people besides yourself, whether that's your family is your motivation or your team is your motivation, your kids are your motivation, whatever that looks like for you. I hope you lean into that and then figure out what your gasoline is and pour it on. Um, I think that's all I have, but Hannah, I so appreciate you getting on here and sharing your thoughts, your experiences and tips. And hopefully you guys got something great out of this. I would love for you to get into whatever chat you are most active in with your team and share your top takeaway that was most impactful to you tonight in that chat and just get talking about it. Um, Hopefully the recording then will be shared for anybody who was not able to get on, but just continue being active. Let's finish out this year. Super strong. You guys keep going, keep pushing for your goals, whether it's Punta Cana or you're just continuing to work for your legacy business. It's okay. If you're not earning the monthly incentives, your life will not end. If you don't have a bag or a cozy blanket, I promise you that, but your life will not be as sweet if you don't continue sharing about Plexus. Love you guys. Thanks.